die. We got a great church. Amen. I greet you in the name of our Lord Jesus the Christ. God bless you. Amen. 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 I like to acknowledge our pastor, our leader, our miracle. Amen. Amen. I'm not sure about you. I brag about my pastor. Amen. Amen. Everywhere I go around this country. That's right. And when I tell them that my pastor at 96 is still preaching, they are amazed. And they give, they say, what is he doing? And I say, Jesus. So he, he, he knows that. Congratulate my pastor on, after spending 41 years at the minister's conference, to have a day in his honor to honor our veterans. Congratulations. I told Pastor I've been a member of the Minister's Conference for 20-some years, and I haven't preached yet, but I'm going to hang in there. <laughs> also want to acknowledge the First Lady of the Church, Beautiful, beautiful young lady. She is 90-something and sitting by the youngest 90s um, person right there. Unbelievable. We just got blessings all over this church. She is my friend and my pastor's wife, and I honor you in the name of Jesus Christ. I acknowledge Sister Evans. God bless you. For getting us on time this morning. God bless you for that. <laughs> also, want to talk to the members of the uh, ministers of the gospel, Reverend Martin, who served in so many roles in this church. If I decide to call them all, we'll be here to the end of the service. But thank you for your ministry, your service in the church. Thank you, Reverend Jones, for that prayer. God bless you. She is a strong woman of God. And what can I say about my brother here? Amen. Strong. Strong. He is strong in his praise and adoration of the Lord. Amen. I'm not sure about you, but strong will never let the rocks cry out on his behalf. On this week, I received some bitter news about a friend of mine in Atlanta. And I'm mentioning her because I love her in Christ. Her name is Teresa Hightower. She passed. She is known as the jazz singer of Atlanta. And if you heard her sing, you gave praise to God. Amen. In addition to that, she became my friend because I've heard her sing many, many times. But also, we would often pray together. And she was one of the few musicians I know who always asked for prayer. She was a member of the Elizabeth Baptist Church in Atlanta. I want to acknowledge her and her pastoring, her family. I know her mother very well, and her son is equally a good, a good entertainer, Tony. The whole family, the Hightower family is blessed, so pray for them. Amen. And of course, the pastor, have you pray for Sister Lee's family. Amen. Amen. I want to congratulate the men of this church. Amen. I'm not, holding, I'm, not, I'm not picking a fight with the women. I just want to congratulate the men of the church. And I want to thank you for your faithfulness. Amen. Amen. And if anybody ever told you that you are a value to us, Amen. I want to, on behalf of the pastor, I believe I have permission to tell you, thank you, you are valued, we congratulate you, and we ask all of you within the strength of my voice to stand and let us give them an applause and thank God for them. Yeah. Despite what you heard, God is not through with men. And also, why I'm thinking, I, a, a joy, I still want to commend you on your, um, your honor that Georgetown bestowed upon you. I cannot allow me to not 
say anything about that. Congratulations to Joy Williams Amen. and her honor. Our theme of today is praying to become men of faith. Amen. Praying to become men of faith. Let us pray. Our Father God, we come at this time to give you the praise, O oh Lord, that you may have mercy upon us as we broke, broke open the bread of life and we tell all within our voice, thus saith the Lord. In Christ's name we pray, amen. amen. I was panicking, I didn't see my glasses. <clears throat> Let us read a portion of scripture for you to familiarize, take from the book of Colossians, starting at the first chapter Amen. around the 15th verse. I want to start at the 14th and I'll read a few verses of scripture and come back to this. Amen. It reads, Paul wrote these words, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sin who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creation. And for him were all things created and are in heaven and are in earth, visible and invisible. Rather, they be thrown of domination, principalities of power. All things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things, and in him all things consist, talking about Jesus. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things we might have preeminence. May God add the richest blessing to the reading, to the hearing, to the understanding of his holy word. Amen. We have an unusual task to talk about men in this difficult time Amen. of our human history. Yes, Amen. 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 Men throughout the history have played a pivotal role in moving civilization, culture, and this world forward. Amen, amen. But every time they move something forward, they do something to move it backwards. Yes, yes. Men is in itself a contradiction in terms. It is, we are difficult Amen. Complex, Amen. simple, and you can Amen. use that any way you want, and sometimes hard to figure out. Okay. Amen. Some women will tell you that after all these years of dealing with men, they still can't figure us out. <laughs> Somebody say Amen. Amen. <laughs> But I'm going to prove to you that to be true for women, too. Amen. In essence, men are in trouble. Yes, he is the cause of his own trouble. All of the trouble that men find themselves in. He is the architect. He is the designer mm -hmm. of all of his own trouble. Mm -hmm. Men is in trouble with God. Mm -hmm. And you can see the church today. This consists of most churches where women outnumber men. Yeah. And the Christian church right now still don't have an answer 
on how do we bring back men to Christ's church. Men are in trouble, but not only God, men are in trouble with women. That's right. They are in trouble with women. I'm going to prove to you. The Me Too movement signifies how trouble the relationship is with men. Okay, I'm going to fix it. So, women are a part of men. Because as the scripture teaches us, when God created Adam, he waited a while before he created Eve. Okay. But he said that I will call her woman. Mm -hmm. So he put Adam to sleep. You know the story. Took a rib out of him yeah. and created woman. Okay. So in other words, Joy, if man is in trouble, or men are in trouble, Amen. women are in trouble as well. Because they are a part of men. Amen. And so, in other words, if, that, if men is causing all of this trouble, then women are causing 50% of it as well. <laughs> That's what the scripture says. Sister Evans is a part of me. We are not separate. We are one. The scripture says. Now, when you divorce, you're two. But when you're married, you want. Okay? Let's be clear about that. This world continues to pit women against men and men against women. That's what this world does. You had the Me Too movement. You have the women who ran for Congress and got elected. And you and 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 it's women against men. And when women get to Congress, there's going to be 30 more members of the Women's Democratic Caucus on the Hill. And then the women is going to form another group with the Republican women. And it's going to be women against men because women believe that they have more wisdom than men, and men believe that they have more wisdom than women. Am I right about it? The problem with that whole scheme that it is unbiblical. Not in the Bible. No, not. not in the Bible. The Bible talks about the unity of men and women and children. That's the order. Now, 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 women says that. Uh, let me let me do this right here. Women are no longer committed to man anymore. I want to be, I'm going to prove it to you. I'm not even saying anything that is wrong. Sister, I can get your coat beak and we have to get out of here real quick. That's right. That's right. That's right. They are no longer committed to men. They are committed to themselves. A woman will tell you clearly that I am the boss of my own self and you are not the boss of me. Now, am I right about it? Yeah. Huh? And, and, and all of these women who are in marriages, they will hyphen their names to prove that there is two people in a marriage and it's not one. Come on, come on. Don't, don't, don't leave me out there. I'm not telling the truth. So they're no longer committed to men. They have decided, this is the word women in the world, to be committed only to themselves. And let me say, you can disagree with me or agree with me, but that's not biblical. Okay? Amen. Okay? Amen. Amen. Our pastor and his wife has proven to be one. Amen. All the years 
that I have known them, I'm, I'm, going, I'm, going, to get, I'm, I'm going to get casual here because I love her. Ruth is not, Sister Davis is not going to do anything that separates that household now because they both are 90, they're both on their way to heaven, and they are committed to one another and one path. That's right. That's, that's what you scribe to do. So women are no longer, according to the world, committed to men. That's why the Me Too movement. Now let me straighten that out so that you understand. Okay. Now I got to watch myself because I'm going to get in trouble because this is going to be on videotape and somebody's going to play this back. So, so let, me do, let me do this. The Me Too movement is right in its application, in its philosophy, that a man, you have no right to put your hand on a woman and abuse her in any way. That woman is a child of God, and if you don't want her, take her back to the house that you got her from. But don't put your hand on that one. Amen. 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 Now let me straighten this out. That's right. The Me Too movement says that women and men are separate. That women should do whatever they choose to do and men should amen them. I want to tell you that's wrong. That's not biblical. Right. Amen. That's right. Amen. Okay. Now I'm going to I'm going to get down to the real thing. No one need to teach a Christian man. Now watch this. I know you're going to correct me on this one. A Christian man not to put his hand on a woman or a child. And I emphasize if you're a Christian, you're holy and you know better. You're Christian, you're holy, and you know better. That's right. That's right. I don't need to put my hands on a woman. I don't need to curse her. I don't need to do anything. Men from the church of Jesus Christ, when you get upset with a woman, all you have to do is shake the dust from your feet and walk away. Men knows also that women at this point 
in 2018 will not die for them either. Men know that. That's why, that's why men, when they're dealing with women, they just walk away. Okay? Now, now this is confusing. It's confusing because men is in trouble with God. That's the only reason it's confusing. is as complex and confusing as it is because it starts off with a simple premise that men are in trouble with God. That's right. Amen. And when men are in trouble with God, it naturally flows that men are going to have trouble with women and then they're going to have Amen. trouble with children. Amen. 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 That's right. Amen. The Bible says that you should not provoke your child. Amen. That's right. right. Now, now, so, women, some women will have you to believe who are not Christians. Okay, I want to straighten this out. Some women will have you believe who are not Christians. You can hear it, who are not Christians, that, that if they were placed in control, things will be better. I want to repeat that again. Some women who are not Christians will say foolishly out of their mouths, and, 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 and that's what they say on the campaign trail to get elected. If you elect these women, we'll straighten Congress out. <laughs> you understand what they said? If you elect these women, we'll straighten Congress out. Let me tell you, beloved, that's not going to happen. Okay? Foolishly, Many women who are not Christians, I'm going to see people, see people say, when, when you say women, people are going to say, you linked up all of us together. I didn't say that. I, I want to repeat what I said. Many women who are not Christians will say foolishly that if you allow women to be in control, things will be better. Let me tell you something, beloved. You can't believe that and that's not in the Bible. That's not in the Bible. Can't believe that. The scripture says, if I can refresh your memory, all have sinned and fallen, fallen short of the glory of God. Huh? Now, 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 did I read that right? He said, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. It didn't say that men have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. It said, all have sinned and falling short of the glory of God. Amen. So in other words, Amen. many will have you to believe, many women who are outside the church and some who are inside the church, will have you believe that if you put women in control of the church, of everything else, things will work out. And I want to confess to you in the name of Jesus Christ, that is a lie. I said it. I said it. And what you will get if you put women in control, just like you got men in control, is a mess. It would just be a feminine mess as opposed to a masculine mess. But a mess is a mess, is a mess, is a mess. Am I right about it? A mess is a mess. So when man finds himself in trouble with God, Women must also find themselves in trouble with God. Beloved, let me tell you, let me break this down. If you get nothing out of this message, God has his order, whether you like it or not, whether you're a feminist or a radical feminist or no feminist at all. His order is God, Christ, angels, men, women, and children. That's the divine order. That's the divine order. That's what you propose to uphold. So man is in trouble all over the place. And in the last days of the creation, God says, let make man in our image and our likeness. In Genesis 1, 26. Thus he finishes his work with a personal touch. God formed Adam from the dust and gave him life by sharing his breath Amen. 
He made man very uniquely. And there's a reason why that he made men this way. Okay? Now that was in 126. First chapter, 26 verse. So watch this. Watch this, beloved. By Genesis 6, 6, this is what God said. And he repented the Lord that he had made man on earth and grieved at him at his heart. Yes. Only five chapters more, he was sorry that he made man. So what happened between Genesis 1, 26 and Genesis 6, 6? Let's see what happened. Well, the first day, it was the creation of the light. The second day, the air and space. The third day, the dry lands. The fourth day, the sun, the moon, and the stars. The fifth day, the animals. The sixth day, the fertilization of the creation of man. Then the seventh day, of course, he rested. He rested. And, and, and then you have Adam. Ate the apple from the unbidden tree. So in between then, by the chapter 3 and 4, it was the root of sin and the doubting and the disobedience of God. And Adam, going against God's will, when God said, do not eat of that tree. Do not eat of that tree. And so he formed at the end of chapter 2. He said, man should not be alone. Check it out. At the end of chapter 2, he said, man should not be alone. And then he put Adam to sleep. You know why he put Adam to sleep? Huh? Do you know why he put Adam to sleep? Because if he didn't put Adam to sleep, Adam would have taken credit of creating Eve. And God wanted Adam to know that he is the only creator here up in here. Amen. And he's taking no credit because he's not creating anything because Adam, just as well as Eve, is the creature and not the creator. That's right. That's right. So, so that's why God put him to sleep. So by 6-6, six, six, we have chaos. If you want to know why there's so much chaos in the world and why things have gotten in a real mess, here's the answer. God gave men certain instructions and he never followed them. Now he didn't say he gave it to women. He gave it to men. And he gave the authority of man over woman. Did you hear what I said? I didn't do that. God said that. God gave the authority of man over woman. Now, now, if you go up to a young female, black, white, Jew, gentle, Gentile anywhere between the ages of 15 or even sooner than that and 55 or 45 and you tell them that God gave me authority over you. Uh, huh? <laughs> now, 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 Brother Renz, I like you. I like you very well. Don't do that. Because you will hear some words that you have never heard before. That is not even in the English dictionary. So it's very clear that God gave men certain instructions that he never followed. That is the reason for the confusion of the world and individual lives in families and between nations. You see what's going on in Saudi Arabia. They're killing journalists and say they didn't kill him. You see what's going on in Yemen. You see what's going on in Israel. You see what's going on in Syria, the civil war there. huh? Man has made a mess of that. And women say, put us in control. And we would straighten things out. Let me tell you, beloved, that's not true. That's not true. If you put them in control, you would have another top style of a mess. Amen. But you still will have the mess that, of the situation. But you know that I take a plane every now and then to go do my job, right? And I have gained a little points on these airlines and these, these hotels. And they said that, um, Evans, I think you deserve an upgrade. So the title of my sermon today, how can you 
Women and men get an upgrade from God through Christ. I think you need an upgrade. I think men need an upgrade because there's only confusion here. So, so, so let us look at Genesis 1. We read about the time that God um, did all the things of the day. Each day he made something new. But whatever he made, anything, he never told us the purpose for why he made it. For an example, on the first day he created life. What is that purpose? Well, we don't know. We can guess, but God never said what was the reason. The next day he created the heavens. No purpose mentioned. The following day he created the dry lands and the plants and the trees. No purpose mentioned. There's so on. And also the animals, the fish, the birds. But when it came to man, finally before he even started making man, he said, let's make man in our image according to our likeness and let him rule over the fishes of the sea and the birds of the sky. God gave man the authority to do that. But, 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 but love, you gotta get this. You gotta get this. Okay. You don't, if, if, as a man, you don't get that authority automatically. You understand that? Amen. Amen. You understand that? You don't get that automatically. You get that authority only when you confess Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior. Watch that. And also that you understand the scripture also that you got to be a member of Christ's body, which is the church. Amen. You don't get that authority automatically. You got to do something to get that authority. There has to be a confession of faith. There has to be a demonstration that you know what mercy is. There has to be a demonstration of your compassion. There has to be a demonstration that you have the knowledge of the word of God. Amen. So we see that the first purpose of God was to create man. That was man should show forth the likeness of God. And that's the crisis that man has. When has the last time a man showed you that of the likeness of God? You created in his image, my brother. But you got to do something. You just can't confess that. You got to do something. You got to show something. You got to show that you are a part of God by having compassion, love, respectability. That means you don't put your hand on women. You get that? That means that you don't put your hand on your child unless you're training your child. That's right. That means that you have nothing to do with law enforcement. Amen. Okay? Because you don't need to call them at your house Amen. if you're treating your wife well. Amen. Oh, I'm going to talk. That's right. You don't have to do that. That means that you have to act according to the scriptures. In order to have that authority that God grants you, and the women will grant you that authority only if you demonstrate to the women that you are like-mindedness of godliness. And that's the crisis. The crisis is that women do not believe in men anymore. Children do not believe in men anymore. Especially if they don't even believe in ministers anymore. Ask the young women and men of the Catholic Church, do they trust the priests? They don't trust the priest because the priest has violated their vow to God. And they don't trust the priest because the priest has sexually abused them. I'm telling you what is right. I know I'm right. Amen. That's right. That's right. That's right. What the priest did, the Catholic priest and even some of the preachers in the Protestant faith, they violated God's holy word of not touching the children. And that's why men are in trouble with God. That means that if man's move around, you could see what God was like because God is a spirit and invisible. Then I just read it? God wanted his character to be manifested through a creative being now, in the early study, we had considered how God has made the angels before he 
made man. But there is no evidence in the Bible that God made angels in his image. No angels could manifest the likeness of God. That's God's choice. The uniqueness of man and the privilege of man that God gave it only to man. Man was made in the likeness of God to show forth God's own image and God's own character. Amen. So that's why men are in trouble. Because they do not possess the character of God. And they say, well, how can I possess the character of God? Well, let me tell you, men, you can do it by being obedient to the Lord. Giving your life to Christ. For every man who is listening to me, if you have not confessed Christ Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you're going to hell. Amen. Amen. I said it and I mean it. Yes. And no women have a right to follow any man who do not love, adore, follow, praise Almighty God through Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So women, are you, if you have a boyfriend, are you shacking up? Are you doing anything with a man who is not of God that is a violation of your faith and is futile and nothing going to become good of that relationship? I said it and I mean it. Amen. Amen. That's right. Amen. Amen. Because God, man is in God's image. If man will submit himself to God, then women will submit themselves to men. That's right. Sister Evans tells me all the time when that, when that phrase says, you should submit to your husband, she said, well, I'm getting there. Everybody is getting there. And it takes a while for women to believe in a man of God who is going to protect the house, who is going to protect her, and who's going to protect her children? Amen. Sister Davis know about Reverend Davis. She had no doubt he's a man of God. Amen. She had no doubt that if the water comes, if the earthquake comes, if the nuclear bomb comes, Pastor Davis will be with his wife. She is confident in that fact that she have a man of God. Once we understand this, we will see that the whole purpose of Jesus dying for us and redeeming us was in order that we might be brought forth to God's original purpose. I want you to get this, Deacon. God's original purpose for man. His original purpose is that we will act, that we will talk, that we will protect, that we will have compassion like God has compassion. Yeah. I like the Mortons because when you see one, you see the other. They work together. They retire together. And they serve in the Lord together. Yeah. Supposing we will draw this in a graphic form. Think of God's purpose of man being like a straight line going slightly upward because God's purpose for man is to be progress. God don't want you to stand still in your ignorance. So, see, the problem with men, if you got a very strong, muscly man, women like very strong, muscly men. So I'm very happy that Sister Evans had some compassion. <laughs> I agree. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Atlas, for that, your compassion. Strong, muscly men. Men believe that they are strength, they are muscles, that their voice, their authority will move things. Brothers, let me tell you, you can be as strong as you are. You can wear 210 and all muscles. God don't care. God has no respect of men, of people in general. Amen. Amen. And I can prove it because when you get a cold, you are flat on your back. Amen. And you call it on Jesus to get up off your back. Amen. So as men going up, men need God every day 
of That's the true. week and every moment yes, of the sir. day. Yes, sir. And the reason why we're in trouble with everybody is because we refuse to follow the Lord. Men need an upgrade. We need to get tight with God. We need to be God's best friend. That's right. Preach, preach. And I can prove it to you. As these sick white men come into our African American church and want to gun us down, the women expect for men to get up and stop that evil at that door. Amen. That's right. Amen. And if you can't do it, you know you for God. Think of God's purpose of man as being a straight line, going slightly upward, because God's purpose for man is to make progress. That God's purpose, that man should progress in a straight line upwards, but sometime in the beginning of the straight line, Adam's fell. I just talked about it. So you never can make progress if you fell. So you just dip straight down. Now, let the line go downward to the pit. What did Jesus do? He came down to the pit. That's why the humanity of Jesus. And picked man up. Come on. And put him back on his original course. His original purpose was to be in the likeness of God Almighty. Amen. Thank God for Jesus. Amen. Thank God for Jesus. Amen. For picking man up. And putting us back on course. Amen. Amen. Now man is being brought back to the straight line of God's purpose for man. Amen. So that the whole purpose of God's plan is to fulfill. And God's for man. And Jesus was not only died for our sins. Amen. But he picked us back, restored us, and gave us an upgrade. He does not put us back on the same plane. God want to give us an upgrade. Amen. And the only way that God can give you an upgrade is that you have to accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. You got to study the scriptures. You got to follow the dictates of your pastor. And you got to show the godness in you. In restoring the failure of Adam, bringing man back to the place where he was before he fall. Amen. But then, now we need to understand that God's purpose is, what is a straight line? Amen. That is reflected in his likeness. So it is not enough to say that your sins are forgiven. Many Christians are just happy by saying that, well, my sins are forgiven and I can do whatever I want. Wrong! That is to say, well, God lift me up from the pit, brought me up to the straight line, but what about the progressing, the uh, moving the line forward? We need to understand what that means. It means growing in the likeness of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Growing in his likeness. So, brethren, I must tell you, what you got to do is always grow in the likeness of Jesus Christ through his word. You've got to take the word of God and you've got to sleep with the word of God. You've got to love the word of God. You've got to be with the word of God for the word of God will deliver you from your ignorance into the likeness of God himself. That's right. That's the word of God. You know that when Jesus came to earth, he didn't come only to die for our sins in the world. It was a part of his purpose in coming to earth. His death from the cross was just an act that lasted six hours in one day. That is, he died, he was buried, he rose again on the third day, but life that he lived for 33 years was that supposedly to demonstrate Amen. to men, that supposed to demonstrate how God wanted men to live on earth. So our example, my brethren, is the example of Jesus Christ. Amen. And Jesus never laid a evil hand on a woman or a man. Amen. Amen. Never. Amen. 
raise his voice in anger. Never was rude, disrespectful, out of bounds. Never sexually harassed anybody. Our demonstration, our example is Jesus the Christ. He's been here for 33 years. It is recorded in the Holy Scriptures. It's recorded in the Holy Scriptures. And in the Holy Scriptures we got. Once we understand this, we will see that the whole purpose of Christ dying for us is to redeem us in order that we may bring back God's original purpose for men. Amen. Supposing that we draw that line, thinking that God will give us an upgrade. Amen. Beloved, God is ready to give men an upgrade. Amen. He's ready to give us an upgrade. And the upgrade is, my brother, is found in Colossians. Remember what I said earlier. Who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature? For by him all things created. That is in heaven, that is in earth. Visible and invisible, rather they be the throne, domination, principality, the priest. All things were created by him for him. So, so, beloved, it's very clear what God wants for us. God wants us to be as powerful as Jesus Christ. Didn't Jesus say that you can do greater works? Women, would you not like a man who can come and dry your tears? Who can come and protect your children? Who can come and love you for who you say you are? Then you will submit unto his divine will because you will recognize the divinity in that man's act because he will be Christ-like. If you don't understand why women are not responding to you, it's because either two things. Either they do not believe, and there's a lot of women who are atheists. All are not holy. And that's why you have, that's why men have trouble with women, is that they try to be in a relationship that is equally unyoke. You believe in Christ, she doesn't. She believes in Christ and you do. It will not work. It will not work. God want to give you an upgrade. Ask God to send you a woman who believes and who, yes, yes, I'm saying it, who will submit unto the will of God that you are a part of the will of God because men is in his life. He's you're, you're in his life. No woman in this church can tell me that they do not want a man who loves, adore, demonstrate, and admire God and that Jesus is the example. Amen. And if you say that you don't want a man like that, then you're a liar. I'm telling the truth. I'm going to tell the truth. And you know, we sugarcoat things for people these days because we don't want to step on nobody's toes, right? I don't care about your toes. I care about the wrath that Jesus will have upon my head if I don't tell you the truth. I care more about Christ than I care about your feelings. I'm trying to tell you, beloved, you would want a man. You would want a man. And he is before all things. Amen. And by all things consists. Amen. And he is the head of the body of the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead. That in all things that he might have preeminence. We need to start producing men. When they walk into the building, every woman and children will give them instant respect. Because they are mad of God. Amen. And the reason why women refuse to give you some respect is because we are not demonstrating the likeness of Jesus Christ in our lives. Amen. And when we start doing that, we will start restoring the order of God. Amen. And when the God order goes up, then he gives us an upgrade. Amen. He will give you the power to heal. He will give you the power to preach. He will give you the power to solve problems. He will give you the power to end the grief. He will
will give you the power to stop white racist cops shooting unarmed black men. He will give you the power to stop Trump in the White House. If you submit all of your being. I'm just, just going to disrupt on that for just a second. When you submit all of your beings, beloved, I'm only talking to the men here. When you submit all of your beings to Christ, when you give it up just for Christ, you will become handsome in the eyes of the world. When you submit your life, your speech, your walk, your talk, your, your actions with Christ Jesus, you wouldn't have to run about a white because they will be lined up, because they will want to marry you. Because you are a man of God and you are in his likeness. So until we get there, beloved, let us call on the name of Jesus Christ. Even though that the war between men and women and men and children and men in the world will continue. Let us be faithful to the word of God and call on God every single day. Men, these are the three things I need you to do today. If you hear me, one, I need you to get down on your knees and thank God that you have an opportunity to become Christ-like. Number two, I need you to come back to the church of Jesus Christ. One of the reasons why men don't come to church is because men is too arrogant. They know it all. They figured it out. I don't need no 96-year-old preacher telling me about Christ. But only when they get in trouble. They get in trouble with the law. Are they get in trouble with women? Are they get in trouble with sickness? Then all of a sudden, God had to break them down. But beloved, it says it's in the scriptures. If he will do that to men, he will do that to women. Right, yeah, yeah. right. Amen. Today, men are out of control. They're doing everything under the sun. And particularly, we need to pray for our white, sick brothers who feel that they have to commit mass murder everywhere they go. In Vegas, 59. Pittsburgh, 11. California, 12. You see why we cannot believe in this system. I believe in men that keep doing it over and over and over again. The only way that we are going to stop that church is that we're going to have to pray for our sick, white, mentally disturbed brothers. But we also have to pray for our arrogant black males who won't listen to nobody. Who won't listen to nobody. They don't respect the preacher, they don't respect the teacher, and that's why they're in jail. Now, I, I agree that there's some innocent people in jail, but all of them are not innocent. And people like Shug Knight, you know, the producer Shug Knight, everybody knows him. Who took his car and ran over somebody. Never confessed Christ in his life. Got away with murder once, murder two, murder three. But this time, they got him. And he's in jail until Jesus comes. We won't be sticking up any protests outside of that jail asking God to deliver Suge Knight. We won't be doing that, but we will pray for his soul that he will finally accept Jesus Christ as his Savior and stop killing God's children. I'm going to tell you, beloved, there will be trouble after this sermon and before this sermon and years to come, but we are going to remain faithful unto Jesus Christ. Right. Amen. I want to grow. I want an upgrade. Amen. I want an upgrade. And my upgrade is that I am praying to become Amen. a 
man of faith. Amen. The doors of the church is open. Let us stand. God has spoken to our men. I beg you in Christ Jesus that you will come to Christ. You will realize your original purpose in God's through Christ Jesus to become a leader, not a destroyer. Amen. To be somebody with love and compassion and mercy. I would not lose this moment.